He was kicked out of the bank because of his color. What he did next is incredible. On a scorching summer afternoon, Marcus Johnson, a determined and hardworking man, made his way through the busy streets of the city. The sun beat down relentlessly, but Marcus was focused on his destination, the bank. He had spent months gathering all the necessary documents and meeting the eligibility criteria for a business loan. He was filled with hope and determination as he walked through the bank's doors, seeking a chance to turn his dreams into a reality. Inside, the cool air provided a brief respite from the heat outside. Marcus walked up the stairs and into the lobby, stopping at the desk of a bank employee named Andy. Andy, who was typing furiously at his keyboard, glanced up at Marcus and then quickly returned to his work, seemingly uninterested. "'Excuse me, sir,' Marcus said politely. "'I'm here to apply for a business loan.' Andy looked up again, this time giving Marcus a quick, dismissive once-over. "'Take a seat,' he said curtly, barely looking at Marcus. "'I'll be with you in a moment.' Marcus sat down, clutching his documents tightly. He couldn't afford to get upset over small annoyances. This loan was too important. He watched as Andy continued to type, feeling a growing sense of unease. After what seemed like an eternity, Andy finally stopped typing and looked at Marcus. "'What do you need?' he asked, his tone indifferent. Marcus explained his business plan and handed over the meticulously gathered documents. Andy glanced at them briefly before pushing them aside. "'I'll get back to you,' he said. "'I have a lot on my desk right now. Move to the side so other customers can be assisted.' Marcus complied, waiting patiently. From his new position, he watched in growing frustration as Andy promptly assisted several other customers, all of whom were white. Each one received courteous and swift service, including loan approvals. Marcus's blood boiled as he realized what was happening. After the sixth person was assisted, Marcus approached Andy again. "'Excuse me,' he said, trying to keep his voice calm." Why haven't you reviewed my application? I've been waiting for a long time. Andy refused to meet his eyes. I told you to wait. I'll get to you when I can. Marcus's patience was wearing thin. You've assisted everyone who came after me. Why am I being treated differently? Andy finally looked up, annoyance clear on his face. You're not eligible for a loan, he said bluntly. Marcus felt like the ground had shifted beneath him. What do you mean? You haven't even looked at my documents. I don't need to, Andy replied coldly. We don't give loans to people of your kind. Marcus's knees buckled, and he had to grab the edge of the desk to steady himself. Are you saying I'm not eligible because of my skin color? That's right, Andy said, his voice hardening. Now leave. The shock and humiliation were overwhelming. Marcus tried to argue, but Andy called for security, who quickly escorted him out of the bank. Outside, Marcus stood in the blazing sun, tears of frustration and anger burning in his eyes. He had never felt so humiliated. Marcus's thoughts turned to his upbringing. He and his younger sister, Lisa, had grown up in a tough neighborhood. Their parents worked tirelessly to provide for them, but money was always tight. When Marcus was 22 and Lisa was 18, they lost their parents in a tragic accident. With no other family to turn to, they relied on each other for support. Determined to create a better life for himself and his sister, Marcus had worked various jobs. However, he quickly realized that these jobs wouldn't provide the financial security he sought. He came up with a business idea, a delivery service connecting manufacturers directly to customers. It was a promising plan, but he needed capital to get started. After numerous rejections from potential investors, Marcus turned to the banks, only to face similar refusals. His hope had been reignited when a friend mentioned a bank known for supporting startups, but now that hope was shattered. Standing in the street, Marcus made a decision. He would not let this injustice go unchallenged. He went home, gathered his thoughts, and contacted a lawyer. Two days later, he returned to the bank with his attorney by his side, ready to sue for discrimination. Marcus's case quickly gained media attention. News outlets and social media platforms buzzed with the story of the brave man standing up against blatant racism. People shared their own experiences of discrimination, adding fuel to the fire. 
The bank's stock began to plummet as customers withdrew their money, unwilling to support an institution that upheld such discriminatory practices. The public outcry was deafening, and the pressure on the bank mounted. In court, Marcus's lawyer presented a compelling case, detailing the bank's discriminatory policies and the emotional trauma Marcus had endured. The judge ruled in Marcus's favor, ordering the bank to pay him $300,000 in damages. The bank quickly paid the fine and issued a public apology, promising to change its practices. But the damage was done. Their reputation was in tatters. With the settlement money, Marcus was able to start his delivery business. Within months, it was fully operational and turning a profit. He bought a house in a safe neighborhood for himself and his sister, achieving one of his lifelong dreams. Despite his success, Marcus never forgot the community that had supported him. He offered discounted delivery services to local businesses and provided mentorship to young entrepreneurs. His company thrived, built on the principles of equality and fairness. The bank, on the other hand, continued to suffer. Their customer base dwindled, and they were eventually bought out by a larger institution. The executives who had upheld the discriminatory policies were replaced, and new inclusive practices were put in place. Marcus's story became a symbol of resilience and justice, inspiring others to stand up against discrimination. His actions demonstrated the power of perseverance and the importance of fighting for what is right. In the end, Marcus's journey was not just about achieving his own dreams, but also about creating a legacy of hope and equality. His incredible response to injustice served as a reminder that one person's courage can spark change and that every act of kindness and fairness can make a difference. What would you have done in Marcus's shoes? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more inspiring stories.